much better looking group uh, right here today uh, with y'all's y'all's better three quarters here. Uh, so, uh, but now we're we're uh, excited about the week, and again, uh, got a lot to be thankful for. I'm really thankful for this team. Uh, you know, the amount of work that they put in since last January. Uh, same with our staff. Just done. It's been a good team to uh, to coach. They've been a lot of fun. Good leadership and a group of just great great young people that have battled their tails off all year and you know to be sitting here 10 and one and uh, you know having the type of season that we had uh, I'm just really proud of them. the season is over uh, and then now it's South Carolina you know so there's the season in South Carolina which is obviously a goal of its own and uh, you know excited doesn't matter what's happened what's coming it's all about you know this week and uh, you know, getting ready for a, a good football team. Man, uh, looking at South Carolina, first of all, Shane's done a great job. Uh, what a huge win this past week. And, and they played their best game. Uh, and uh, we played our best game. You know, so, you know, uh, two good teams, you know, that are coming off of big wins uh, where they played well. And, and uh, you know, both teams, I think, got some confidence. But, you know, you look at their football team and, and defensively, they got, they got a lot of talented guys over there. Uh, you know, a lot of guys that we recruited uh, throughout that defense, and especially up front, uh, they've got a lot of respect for. They're, they're big, strong, and athletic guys up front, mostly a four-down team, do a lot of things in coverage-wise uh, to challenge you. Uh, you know, we know Brad Johnson. I mean, he's a six-year player. Some of these guys have been playing a long time. Uh, you know, Green is an excellent player. Nine, I think, is, is, is one of their better players as well. Uh, you know, two good corners. They've kind of settled on the two freshmen at safety. Uh, so it's a good group. They get after you. And uh, we got to do a nice job. And then over on the offensive side, uh, man, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a team be hotter than, than what they were last week. They, and they, you know, they got a, a lot of confidence comes from that. Made a ton of plays. I thought the quarterback was, was outstanding. I mean, he played an unbelievable game. You saw what he can do throwing the ball. I mean, he put some, he, he had some plays where it was, it was that, that, that far. And uh, man, he, he was incredibly accurate, his great timing, great anticipation. I thought his receivers and tight ends really showed uh, what they're capable of last week as well. Uh, you know, you've seen it at times throughout the year, but it looked like they just really put it together uh, last week and uh, against a really good football team. So uh, this is a good group, very experienced up front. You know, we know a lot about these guys. I mean, we played against them. Got four out of five starters back. They got a bunch of guys outside, 13 and six, um, uh, 10, 5, 3, 17. All these guys uh, have played a lot of ball. Of course, their tight end is a Swiss Army knife type guy. He's everywhere. And uh, second leading rusher on the team. Uh, you know, really good backs. I'm not sure. I know they've had some guys injured. I'm not sure who's, who's back, who's playing, but a really, really talented group. Uh, so, you know, and then special teams, they've been outstanding. They blocked a bunch of kicks. They Turn punts, they've had a kick return. Uh, it's been a different. It's been the difference for them in a couple of games, uh, for sure. So uh, you know, this is a uh, all three phases uh, on high alert type of game. Everybody's got to play well, and, and uh, we're excited about the week and uh, getting back in the valley. This is the last one for our seniors, and uh, you know, it's always a big deal uh, when you play in your last home game. And, and I hope our crowd will show up and, and uh, really get behind them and support this team. You know, it's a, I know a lot of people don't like a noon game, you know, and all that stuff. But, uh, man, we need the best noon crowd that we've ever had, you know. Come Friday. If you can come Friday, come then. Uh, you know, pitch a tent, you know, whatever. Let's, let's, let's have a great crowd and let's be ready. Uh, Dean, you going to have them ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's have them <laughs> ready. All right, we need, we need a great crowd and, and uh, it should be a fun environment. And, you know, our focus is just simple. It's, it's on finishing strong and, um, you know, trying to play our best four quarters and trying to achieve this goal. That's our focus. That's what we, can, we, we feel like we can control. And that goes back to, you know, how we practice today, how we practice tomorrow. You know, there's a lot to manage this week uh, with Thanksgiving and families in town and all that type of stuff. So, you know, staying focused and, and uh, again, really preparing the best we can and, and trying to play our best game. This is, again, a fun, fun week uh, for everyone all across the country. Uh, it's rivalry week. You know, I, I was a part of 13 Alabama-Auburn games, and, man, that was, that was always my favorite week of the year. 
and now I'm on my 19th Clemson South Carolina game, and it's my favorite week of the year. Uh, this is a this is a fun week because it's it really is, you know, uh, you just can feel, you know, the intensity of it, if you will, because everybody everybody everybody's paying attention and everybody's involved, and it's just a it's a it's a lot. You look all across the country, whether it's Michigan, Ohio State. Mississippi, Mississippi State, Georgia Tech, Georgia, Florida, Florida State, you know, whoever it may be. Uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to be a part of these type games. Not everybody has an opportunity to be a part of a, a real traditional rivalry type game. Um, and so, uh, man, I'm thankful for that. I look forward to a great day in the Valley on Saturday. Because I grew up in Alabama. <laughs> you, where'd you grow up? Uh, suburb of Chicago. There you go. Uh, so, you know, Northwestern, Northwestern. and Indiana probably in, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're probably not having, you know, marriages break up over that. Um, you know, no offense to Northwestern and Indiana. Uh, I don't even know if they play each other. But, you know, you grew up in Alabama, it's just, I mean, that's it. I mean, I've, I, I, I've said many times if you don't even leave the hospital, you got you got to declare like right there which way you going. I mean, there's no like and they put it right on your birth certificate. Otherwise, you just stay in the hospital and let you leave. So, uh, I mean, that's the best way I can answer. That's what I grew up with. That's all I know, you know. And you know, it just was my whole life. Uh, you know, 33 years until I came to Clemson. Came here, I was 33, and that's all I knew. And I mean, and. and and then, and, you know, growing up and then 13 times being a part of it as a player and a coach, uh, just in your blood and you live with it and you die. I mean, it's, it's, I've, been, I've, been on, I've been on both sides of it, uh, so I get it. Uh, I know how it is. I've, I've won them and lost them. Won some on the last play, lost some on the last play. Uh, won some big, lost some big. I've, been, I've, I've experienced every, every part of it, but when you grow up in a place like Alabama, and then you come to South Carolina, and it's no different, exactly the same. And that's what I that's what I experienced when I came here. Is it didn't take me long to figure out. Well, this is a different logo, but this isn't any different. Uh, you know, when I first hit the road recruiting in uh, spring of '03, and you know, people didn't even know me, but I, you know, as soon as I walked into school, half the people didn't like me. Oh, it's the Clemson guy, you know, or whatever. Well, that just was normal to me. It was no different in Alabama. You walked in, it's oh, it's the Alabama guy, you know, because the Auburn is half and half. Uh, and I, I came up in a time where the stadium was half and half. You know, we played in Birmingham, you know, all the way for most of those games, and then kind of the latter part of my career is when we started going back and forth, uh, Alabama Auburn. Uh, so coming here was a very natural thing for me. It just felt normal uh, that people don't like you. That felt normal, um, and felt normal to you know go on the road and recruiting in the state and, and have a you know people instantly judge you because you have a, a logo on your shirt. That felt normal. Uh, so I just I love that. And, and then you, I've experienced everything. Won big, lost big, uh, won close, lost close. I've experienced all of that, you know, in this rivalry as well. And it's special. I mean, it really is. It means a lot to a lot of people. So, um, never gets old. And you know, we had the one year we missed with COVID. So this is uh, it's a big deal to a lot of people. So I've just always embraced it because it's it's just natural to me. Thirty-two. Um, and talk to a bunch of people. Talk to Danny Ford about it this week. And he mentioned your '08 game, and that that was kind of like the cherry on top. That you were the guy who could really do this. What do you remember about that game? 08 game? Uh, well, I mean, probably not here if it wasn't for the 08 game. Uh, and uh, so I think that was a noon game, I think. Uh, mm. I think that was a noon game. I just remember it being very gloomy. It felt like 6 o'clock, uh, you know, but it was a, it was actually a noon game. And uh, I just remember it had been such a blur seven weeks, and now it's kind of coming to an end. And if we win the, I mean, I knew that if we won the game, then I think Terry Don was going to be able to have enough clout to probably give me a chance. And if we lost the game, you know, it, he was going to have to 
he was going to have to probably fight a little harder, you know, and I don't know. I don't know what would happen. Um, would have been probably a lot tougher for him to give me the opportunity, but certainly winning that game, uh, where I think it was, uh, I don't know, 31 to 17, or I don't know, what was it? What was it? 30, yeah, 31 14. And, um, you know, winning that game just kind of solidified the opportunity. And uh, so it was a great day for sure. I'll never forget that ever. Um, and, you know, uh, just a special moment after the game, a special day the next day because I came over and met with Terry Don and, and um, you know, Billy D and, and uh, you know, President Barker. And, they told me I was going to get the job, and so that was a really cool, cool time, uh, for sure. So never, never, ever forget that moment. And I had no, you know, just prepared, and you have no idea what's what's going to happen. And, uh, they were a really good team, obviously Coach Spurrier, uh, the job he did there. So it was a it was a big win. Coach, it's been nine years since you lost your rival, um, but I guess you have a sense of what that desperation is like for those players, having lost five to them yourself. Absolutely. why every year, I mean, it's you just put everything you got into it and uh, you know, try to, doesn't matter what the records are, doesn't matter if there's a streak, and none of that stuff matters. I mean, you got to play well in this game. And, and you know you're going to get their best, they're going to get our best, and uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to execution and doing what you got to do to win the football game. You know, blocking, tackling, throwing, catching, taking care of the football, you know, being sound in special teams. Uh, executing the red zone. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot that, that you got to do. Once the emotion kind of gets out of the way, it's all about football. Uh, so you got to stay focused on those things uh, in games like this and not get distracted, you know, by all the, all the pomp and circumstance that comes along with it. It's, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a football game. And uh, most fired up team ain't going to win. Uh, it's the team who executes the best. It's the team that does the things that wins football games. Uh, that does those things the best, that's who wins. And uh, so, you know, again, uh, we, we, we've got uh, great respect for them. Uh, certainly, I think Shane's done an amazing job. I mean, he really has. I mean, you just see their team uh, with a lot of energy, a lot of belief, and uh, you know, we'll, we've got to play well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter however many we've won. It doesn't matter. Uh, you got to play well. you got to earn it this Saturday. Did you reach out to him after the win, or is this one of those weeks where you just kind of wait and see him on the field side? Oh, I'll see him. I'll see him Saturday. The, uh, his, his program is built on some similar cultural, holistic things as yours. I'm curious, before he became a head coach, before he even knew that he might end up there, did you ever pick your brain on what he might do when he uh, took uh, his own You know, I, I, don't, I don't know the inner workings of their program. Uh, Talked many times over the years, uh, but you know, not not specifically sat down with him and, and gone through you know, specific things. Just you know, just really organic conversations that have happened naturally. You mentioned all the different rivalry rivalry games at Alabama here. You've been involved with. So is 08 the high point? Is there a specific low point? You've had you've had highs, you've had lows. Yeah, so 2013, five in a row, six turnovers. Yeah, that was pretty low. I thought we had the better team. I think Coach Spurrier thought we had the better team. He called. He called. I was telling radio people last night. He called me last. He, he called me the next day to almost apologize. Like, yeah, I don't know why y'all turned that ball over. I don't, don't understand it. You know, it's, I'm like I don't either, Coach. Uh, but yeah, so that was probably the. That was probably the. I mean, they're all they're all bad. It don't matter if you've lost five in a row. If you lose one in a row, it's you lose this game. It it stinks. Period. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You can win 20 in a row. But when you lose this game, uh, it stinks. There's nothing good about it. And same thing, when you win it, uh, it's great. And that's been that way forever and ever and ever in a rivalry game and always will be. But specifically, that, that, was, a, that was a disappointing day because, again, I, I really thought we had – I mean, I had six turnovers. We still had a chance, you know, late in the game. Uh, but uh, it was a tough day for us. Coach, since you brought up turnovers, um, I guess, is there anything you can do differently than what you do every week in practice? Is it psychological at this point? Yeah, probably. I mean, Davis Allen has never fumbled ever. Uh, I don't know, you know, got to put a good hit on the ball. Uh, so, you know, same thing with Brandy. Pretty good ball security. Got to put a good hit on the ball. So, we just got to 
you know, I think, again, I think you just you just got to uh, keep coaching the fundamentals and really stress things in practice. You do everything you can with your scouts to, to but you don't want. I mean, you got to go play, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's one of those things we just kind of play our way out of. But the good, the difference is what they get. You know, so you know, we've been getting takeaways, and and I know from a stat standpoint, we we, we finished I guess minus one, but we really finished plus one. You know, as far as how we track things. I mean, you stop somebody fourth and one in the scoring zone, that's a turnover. Uh, you get a safety, that's points and a turnover. Because you get points and the ball. Uh, so it doesn't go down in the book that way. So that's why we, you know, you still win 40 to 10 because we're plus one uh, in the margin. Same thing the week before. And the one game we lost, we, we didn't do that. We were negative. Uh, so we've just, and if we can just kind of keep getting them and just cut that down, uh, good things will happen for us. But it's just, you know, some basic things, uh, really basic things, and you just got to keep executing the fundamentals. You talked about the week you face a great quarterback. And this is a quarterback that struggled, but then last week just had maybe the best game of his entire career. It was awesome. I mean, he made some throws that were, I mean, you can't defend. I mean, you can't defend it. I mean, they, if you go back and really watch it, I mean, they had guys there. And I mean, it, it, it's the difference. I mean, it's that much is the difference in that touchdown catch to was a six uh, and, and an incomplete. I mean, it's an inch. Uh, but that's the game. You know, the, the throw down the sideline. I mean, he, he just made some beautiful plays. He bought time. He extended some plays. Um, and, and then his guys made plays. I mean, they made a ton of plays. Um, so, I mean, he's he's a five star quarterback for a reason, and a starter in Oklahoma for a reason has done a lot of great things. He's a really, really talented player. Uh, so, man, we've, we've seen a bunch of them this year. Uh, we, we've had a lot of them on our schedule throughout the year, and he's he's definitely uh, got all the tools. Do you see some similarities in him and DJ just in the way, like, everybody loved them this time, you know, a year plus ago, and then they had to, you know, everybody's criticizing them, and then they come back and kind of show why it is everybody loved them in the first place? I mean, I, I probably, I mean, they both have had, uh, I mean, other than DJ still here, uh, you know, obviously uh, they made a change at Oklahoma, and so he moved on. But, uh, you know, again, I think the quarterbacks get, you know, uh, a lot of blame sometimes. And, I mean, like last year, for example, DJ didn't play well, but we weren't very good around him either. And, uh, you know, I think that, it's taken them some time to kind of hit their stride this year. Now those kids are playing, making plays for him. But uh, he's a very talented player, and uh, you know they both have kind of had some ups and downs. But you know DJ's really played well for us. Outside of two games, he's he's played well. He's twenty was it twenty one and five as a starter or something like that. I mean he's a he's a winner. I mean, he's a great leader. Uh, and he's an unbelievably committed guy. So I don't know Spencer. Uh, you know, I've never met him. I don't think. Uh, but I got a lot of respect for him as a player, and uh, he's he's got all the tools. In comparing his recent performances to what he did Saturday night, you notice that they were doing some things differently with him, quicker getting it out. Uh, yeah, they. I mean, they did a good job schematically and, and some formations and, and some things, and they mixed in some a lot of wildcat and a lot of crossers. Um, you know, had, had, had complemented things with, with some easy outlet passes in the screen game, but I mean, they took a lot of shots. And uh, guys made some, guys made some unbelievable plays. But he made some throws. You know, they had a lot of max protection. You know, Tennessee he caught Tennessee in a bunch of man coverage, and they had max protection. And I mean, it's just my guy's better than your guy, but the quarterback put the ball on the money. I mean, incredibly accurate. Uh, so that's really it. It's really not complicated. They just blocked them and threw and caught the ball better, and, and um, you know, did some, did, got the ball in the back, hit some flats on a couple of times. And, I mean, they hit a third and 20, a third and 17, uh, with some deep crossers, you know, just, just accurate throws and good protection. Coach, how would you characterize DJ as a runner? Because it doesn't look like he's running very fast, but some of these moves he's made in the open field and his vision, I mean. He's, he's got that stanky leg, he's got that <laughs> stanky leg. Uh, he, he's, he's just confident now. I mean, he's gone from a guy that, that wasn't very confident running the ball to now he's very confident. And uh, he, he's, he's – Faster than you think. Uh, he's way more athletic than you think, but he's big and strong. I mean, 
breaks a lot of tackles, and uh, he's a big man to get down. He's 238 pounds, uh, and uh, he's got a he's got a good understanding of, of how to set things up. Um, so you know, he's just he, he sees it. He's got good vision as a runner. You know, he may not be a, a Barry Sanders as far as change of direction, but he's got good vision. He can see it, and he and he does a nice job of you know changing direction. Uh, but he's just. Bottom line, he just worked really hard at it, and he's just much more confident. And um, he's been a big factor for us, for sure. Yeah, we, we kind of do that last week, honestly. Um, and we, we, I don't remember what year we started doing that, but it was um, somewhere, somewhere, I don't know, I don't know if it was 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that range. Uh, but because I just felt like when we, hit our last game was here, there was already a lot of emotion. And then you throw that into it and all the family and all the stuff going on, I just think, you know, uh, it was just better to move that. Uh, so we kind of deal with that last week. And, um, <coughs> And then this week, you know, they've kind of been through that. They've, you know, they're processed it. They'll come down the hill as a group, just you know. But all the senior day stuff, man, it's we just try to make it all about the game. And uh, I think because again, there's enough emotion involved. Certainly, they know it's their last game in the valley, and they want to play well. And that's really what we try to put the focus on. Is just you know, let's play well. Let's 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 try to you know finish with no regrets. You know, let's finish the right way. Be plenty of time to uh, reflect. Coach, unfortunate um, about Marcus Tate, but um, showed a lot of improvement, didn't he, from freshman yeah, to sophomore he, year? He really did. I mean, he he played he played really well, and uh, he, he just night and day, just you know, just incredible improvement from where he was last year. Learning uh, the game was fast, and he, he's physical. He's athletic. He can play left tackle for us, no problem. You know, and he worked a lot of left tackle this year, not as much in the games as, as you know, what we work him in practice and stuff. But um, he's a great kid. You know, he's really grown as a, as a young man, and, and just proud of him. Uh, you know, again, disappointed that, that he's not going to get to finish with us, but um, I'm thankful that he got to play you know, 11 games, and uh, his confidence is through the roof. And I'm thankful that it's not something that's. You know, it's not an ACL or something like that. He'll he'll bounce back and and uh, be ready to roll. Just looking at uh, Trent Simpson back at that big old Sam spot. Just what is it about the skill set of him as a player that makes him so effective in space? He, he's just so fast and big. You know, you don't see many guys that are his size, almost 240 pounds, that, that can that can just accelerate like him. He's strong. Uh, you know, he's. he's just a natural guy in space, um, and uh, he's got two years of experience at it. He's got nine games playing inside in the box, which is different. Uh, and you know, it just kind of the best thing for our team right now is is, is where we are. And uh, you know, so it's 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 been good. I thought he got all played well. We only had, we only had 40, what, 42 snaps last week on defense, and he was pretty productive uh, in, in that role. And uh, you know. Played some nickel and stuff as well, but he did a, he did a nice job. But he can he can come off the edge, he can run people down, uh, he can cover, and um, you know, just just a unique unique uh, unique talent. Yes, you guys said his projection across the NFL was. Yeah, he, he'll he'll most likely be an in the box guy at the next level, that's, and that's one of the things that you know uh, it's one of the reasons we moved him inside. Plus plus with. Uh, uh, you know Barrett, and kind of where he was coming off his freshman year, uh, and he's he's a unique guy as well. But yeah, he'll he'll most likely be a will at the next level. He can play Sam as well, but uh, I don't see him being a, a nickel guy. You'll see him transition a little bit more like Isaiah Simmons. Coach, this will be the seventh opponent you face this season that's been ranked at some point. Next week will be an eighth. You can stack that schedule up against just about anybody in the playoff race, can't you? 
tough schedule all year, every game. Every game is a tough game. It's hard to win. Uh, and people like to, there's a lot of narratives that people like to put out there, but all you gotta do is just pay attention to college football. It's really hard to win. When you look at last week, it's a perfect example. Really, really hard to win, uh, especially consistently. You know, in college football, dealing with young people, anybody can have a bad day. Uh, and, you know, I mean, anybody. It's a, it's a tough, tough game in, um, in college football. There's a lot of parity, and you know, you have injuries. There's a lot of things that go into it, and uh, anybody can, anybody can have a day. And uh, there's what four undefeateds and two teams with one loss. Uh, so hard to win, man. Hard to win. I have some Thanksgiving questions for you. Okay. Uh, I absolutely do not like cranberry sauce. Uh, I, I've never, never eaten cranberry sauce, uh, so I'm, I'm out of that. Put me on whatever side that is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm turkey. Uh, I'm pretty simple. Turkey. My mom's chicken and dressing which is amazing. Uh, mac and cheese, some corn, and then some beans. You know, uh, pretty simple. Hopefully, there's some pecan pie. Carrot cake. Uh, that's about it. But in multiple plates. Savory? What's that? Yeah, I'm more. I kind of eat one thing at a time. Uh, you know, occasionally I'll take a bite of something here or there, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't usually just mix it up. I'll keep it. Keep it all neat and orderly. Put some pepper. Not a big salt guy, but a lot of pepper. A lot of pepper. A lot of pepper. Roll. Did you have those plates when you were little with the dividers that kept all your, your portions uh, divided? <laughs> I think, you know, somewhere along the line, maybe, at, at middle, elementary school or something, I think they gave you those. You had the little spot for the for your utensil and the square piece, you know, so you could put your pizza there. And, you know, had those little things, the, the little green trays. I don't know if they still do that or not, but I don't really remember them at home. What is Bo Collins availability for Saturday? He's going to be ready. Ready to roll. Um, when they use a guy like Bell the way they do, I mean, what are the, the challenges that that presents for you? Well, I mean, he just—I mean, it's kind of been out of necessity. I mean, I don't think they want to—I don't think they want him to be their tailback. Uh, but they're trying to win, and they're using their best players. It's just good coaching. Uh, you know, if they get—if they got one and twenty-one, I, I think I don't think they're going to put zero back there in, in their place. But uh, it, uh, first of all, it shows their confidence in him. It shows how talented he, that kid is. And uh, and just shows good coaching, you know. I mean, you can look at us last year with the challenges that we had with some injuries down the stretch. I mean, we just had to manufacture things uh, and find a way, you know. And that's, sometimes that's what you, you got to play the hand you're dealt. So that's what they've done. They've gone with some wildcat stuff. They've got uh, Joyner back involved um, to, to create, you know, just First downs and challenges. I mean, he's a really good player. He sees things. He's a good decision maker back there. As far as do I keep it? Do I give it? You know, knows how to process things. And um, uh, but yeah, I mean, Zero is a big old dude, man. But he's back there in the backfield. Uh, so I think they just done what they need to do to give himself a chance to be successful. Is Smith the most like well-rounded running back you've had here, like from the start since CJ maybe? Uh, probably. I would say Ellington was a, a lot like that. Andre Ellington. Uh, I don't know if you remember him or not, but he was he was a very dynamic kid. Uh, I mean, he could do it all. He's a returner, a great receiver out of the backfield, uh, explosive. Uh, you know, he was I'd say uh, probably C.J. and Andre. Gallman was just different. Gallman was violent, like like Shipley, because Shipley's got a lot of violence to his game, but not as quite as dynamic uh, as, as Ship. Um, Etn, you know, kind of developed into that dynamic. You know, he didn't show up that way. I mean, he couldn't catch pass when he got here, you know, because and not that he couldn't, he just had never really done it. Um, so you look at how we ended up using him. He was a returner. 
Uh, he was a big time receiver. You look at how many catches he had, you know, his last year here, and, and then you know how he grew. Um, you know, he's explosive and he ran violent too. <coughs> so I think I think those guys are all similar. I mean, certainly just showing up here, um, you know, Shipley, um, even Spiller. You know, Spiller was not a guy who had you know done what we what we do, and uh, so he he had to kind of learn how. How to, how to be a true running back and run the zone and run the counter and the power and all those things. And he, he was more of an uh, you know, option kid coming out of high school, uh, like Travis, but he was just very natural, like, like Ship, when it came to catching the ball and, and all those type of things, return game, et cetera. So um, we've had a few of those guys, but Ship's definitely, he's right there with that group, you know, when it comes to all the tools he's got that he has. Yeah, the ton of energy that yep. people kind of gravitate to, right? Yep, yep. He's a very natural leader. He's he's been that way since. I mean, he's one of the few freshmen that have come in here and and has led, and the guys follow. You know, you don't usually see that, but uh, that's just a very natural thing for him. But it just becomes because of how he works. I mean, as I've said this many times, he's never lost a sprint from the time he got here as a freshman. He wins every sprint. He wins the first one, he wins the 20th one. And he's not that freshman that's going to come in and like doesn't want to show up the upper class. He doesn't care. You know, he, he doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to be great. He works that way. And if you can't keep up with that, it's your problem. That's just kind of how he is. Uh, but he's a great kid. Uh, but when he, he's on the field, man. He's a, he is a, he is a unbelievable competitor. You look at like how last year finished for you guys, and how much of that was him sort of blossoming into his own and, and, and doing it injured at the same time. Yeah, those last you know five six games of the year. Yeah, I mean it just you know I mean, we did everything we could those last six games to just find a way to win, and I mean we did a little bit of everything. Uh, we just kept trying to get the ball to our best players, manufacture some stuff. I thought DJ really led us well down the stretch there. Uh, he was hurt, bad knee, bad finger, and uh, you know he's he's a leader like Shipley. He's respected like Shipley. They're just different in how they go about it. Um, but the combination of those guys, certainly, I mean, he was he just kind of willed us to some games. I mean, the, you think about the the run he had against Florida State, for example. You know, I mean, it was just awesome. Uh, but he's relentless that way. I mean, it, 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 the more he touches it, the better he gets. Physical it is, the better he gets. Uh, so he's just one of those guys that you know everybody. You hate to play against him. Everybody wants him on their team um, for sure. Coach, how did Randall do in practice yesterday with the with the broken bone in his hand, and um, how much of a concern does that make ball security after the catch for him? Uh, well, I mean, like I said, he's got strong fingers. It's, it's just it's kind of right there, uh, and it'll be protected, but. Fine. Uh, so we'll, we'll certainly see how it is and have it protected. And, you know, hopefully he'll get used to it this week practicing with it. Um, but I mean, ball security is a concern. Period. Good hand, hurt hand. I mean, if you, if you watch our last few games, uh, uh, it's a concern. Matt Brown said earlier this week that he's already hearing from players and player agents about. You at all or is that stuff just kind of moving in a different direction so that they're kind of coming in the back door as opposed to the front? I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, you guys are going to, I mean, regardless of when you have a day you can go in, I mean, we've had a couple guys leave already, so, okay, they're going in the portal. Uh, they can't officially go in until whatever day, but I don't know that that changed anything. Uh, that really, really affected At least you got a window, I guess, where it's official. Uh, but the guys are going to leave. They're going to leave. So. Do you have to approach your own like team differently? Like have conversations at this point in the year to say like, when you think about where you're going, or do you just say like, look, we'll get to it at the end of the year? If you're thinking focus on South Carolina. We ain't yeah. worried about none of that. We're just trying to beat South Carolina. We're not focused on any of that stuff. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? Yeah, <laughs> 
know obviously uh, South Carolina made plays against Tennessee, but what did maybe Tennessee not do defensively to affect them the way that other teams have this year when they've struggled some on offense? Well, they missed several tackles, uh, first of all. They missed some big tackles, uh, which led to some big plays. And then, uh, you know, just coverage, coverage issues. Uh, I didn't think they affected the quarterback. Uh, you know, he got, I mean, he was very comfortable. Uh, he had a lot of time on a lot of plays. To, to get comfortable, and um, and then they just <coughs> they didn't make the competitive plays. I mean, it seemed like every competitive play where they were in position to make the play, they didn't make. So that's it. Coach, this is Amanda Poole with Watch Fox. I was just going to ask, this will be BT Potter's last home game after what feels like he's been here for like 10 years, but it's officially his last year, I guess, when you talk about his growth, what's the thing that you think he's grown most uh, throughout his time at Clemson? Uh, just his maturity and, and how he goes about, um, you know, the, just the process week to week of being ready. I mean, from when he came in here as a freshman, I think he was uh, uh, just not as focused as he needed to be. It, it just kind of came easy to him. And, uh, man, he's, he's, he handles himself like a pro. Uh, he really does. I mean, he's going to be a great pro, um, but he's just his maturity, you know, he's just become a very mature young man, uh, he's become a great leader, uh, he's one of the more, he's going to be a captain for us this week, as a matter of fact, and uh, you know, just just his, just his uh, routine, becoming very, very committed to his routine, week in and week out, game in and game out, kick in and kick out, um, but that's to be the main two things, just just his maturity and uh, his leadership, and just overall commitment to uh, you know the focus that you have to have week in and week out to, to be consistent uh, in his role. Hey Dabo, it's Anna. Um, I know you mentioned it on your show last night, red zone defense. What are some areas there that you feel like you can improve upon? Yeah, we guys got to cut down on the touchdowns. I mean, and it's details. It's really that simple. It's just details, some, especially in some coverage uh, situations. Um, that's the main thing. Dabba Wells for them, number three at receiver. Seems like he's maybe um, Spencer's go-to guy. Just what do you see from him, and, and how have you seen him kind of evolve this year? Yeah, he's a really good player. I think he's a lead receiver. Uh, you know, he's he's got good hands. Uh, he can run. You know, he's a confident kid. He's got a ton of experience. He came from somewhere, uh, JMU, I think. Uh, you know, a very, very polished guy. And you just see his veteran uh, confidence, you know, out on the field. But he, he, made, he made a couple great ones last week uh, as well. Went up over the one kid. Uh, and that's what I meant earlier about competitive plays where they had a guy there and uh, you know, just made it. So. He's, he's definitely a guy that you can tell they got a lot of confidence in and want to get the ball to. Anyone else for Coach? Yeah, Steve one more on shift. Was there a moment in the recruiting that you were like, this guy is not just you know, special on the field, but he's going to be a really great fit for us? Like, when did you kind of, when did it kind of gel that like, this is the perfect Clemson guy? Oh, man. First time I met him, watched him in camp, came to high school camp. Um, I guess maybe his 10th grade year or junior year. Whatever, uh, but early, early. You know, one of the first times I met, just watching him work, uh, his presence when you meet him, when you spend time with his family. I mean, just, just a, he's just got a, he's just got an energy to him and a confidence to him that is, uh, it just, just, just feel it. And uh, then you watch the tape. You know, holy moly! But watching him in camp, uh, first time he came. Tell this kid is really special. How he worked, how he competed, uh, how he was leading everybody else. You know, getting line. You know, whatever it was. I mean, he just, he just was different. You know, from from the get go. Yep. He's just the opposite of Shipley. You know, Shipley. You 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 see him. You hear him. Uh, he's not on the field. You still hear him because he's, you know, yelling at everybody else and, and, you know, cheering on whoever made the play. 
You know, I mean, that's just who he is every day, every play. Whereas Antonio, you never hear him. You know, he's just a very quiet, about his business kid, um, very confident, very confident. Uh, that was one of the things that stood out about him early on was he just had a, he just had a, uh, an elite confidence to him. You know, that he never, he never carried himself like a freshman. Uh, didn't matter what we were doing, and then you know, didn't take long to see that he had more. He had a lot of knowledge and a lot of wisdom, and you know, especially from a technical aspect of his position that most freshmen don't. And the game was never fast for him. I mean, he just he just kind of took to it, and uh, you know, once he kind of learned the, the offense and terminology and all those type of things. I mean, but from a from a, a route running standpoint, a, a technical standpoint, just very confident showing up. And once again, he kind of got the mechanics of the offense down. He, he went just like that. But he's just a very, very uh, ultra competitive kid, but he just carries himself, you know, you'd never know he's in the room. And, uh, and you would never notice him until he gets on the field. So two different guys, uh, two different approaches, and but just that's just who they are. You know, he's just a very cool, calm kid, and but loves to compete, loves to play. Whereas Ship is is not cool and calm. You know, he is uh, he is angry on the field and off the field. He's just a ball of energy. You know, and, and he's the biggest supporter of everybody, and he loves to you know support and cheer for the other guys. It's just you just hear him all the time. Just guy, that's just who he is. Uh, so they both are very comfortable in their skin. All right, thanks.